Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Answer the Call on Overcomers TV and Frank Speech. We're so excited to be talking about evangelism and discipleship. We're highlighting ministries that are serious about doing that all around the world. Today we're in Miami, visiting the Caring Place, the Miami Rescue Mission, which also has the Broward Outreach Centers. With me, the great Reverend Ron Brummett. Yeah. Ron, thank you hey. so much for helping us do the sequel, Requel. Well, I don't know about the great Ron Brummett, but <laughs> we serve a mighty great God. Yeah. And uh, it's been many years since you've been able to come down and, and spend some time with us. But this year is a very special year, Chuck. It is 100 years. Marilyn did her stuff yesterday. And 100 years, can you believe it? God's faithfulness, right? So um, back to the great I am stuff. I always say if you have the great I am on the inside, we have to be at least halfway there, right? So that's, that's my correct. theology. That's right. <laughs> Well, again, you know, it's not only been here just 100 years. Yeah. You know, the other day um, I was in my office and looking at a whole mess of old photos. I mean, photos that went back 30, 40 years and, right. and even some older. And I started looking at it. And, and in those photos were buildings and building campaigns and people with shovels. And that was part of it. Yeah. But the greatest part that really stuck to my heart mm -hmm. was when I saw the thousands of faces that are in those photos yeah. that were in the past. And I'm yeah. thinking, you know, only by the grace of God, yeah. you know, at these, most of, not every single one, we can't say everyone, because we're not right. the Lord, we don't know right. who right. made a decision. Yeah. Where are decision. they now? We could do but, a whole bunch but, of episodes but, 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 on where are I'm they now. Thinking, yeah. But I am thinking, Chuck, all these men, women, and small kids, yeah. and now probably are grown and have kids of their own, right. were loved on, were encouraged, yeah. We shared the gospel of Jesus Christ in a very practical way, you know, not shoving it down their throat or right. pleading for someone to get saved. Right. And that's when I walk away. I said, you know, that's a hundred years yeah. uh, of people coming down from the north, just want to do some good work for the Lord yeah. and how it progressed and how it, how it morphed over time. I've been here 31 years, yeah. and I've seen it change over my tenure. And then the refounders, the Jacobs, uh, yeah. which are uh, really my mom and dad in the faith. They were yeah. here for 35 years. In fact, they came in 72. Wow. So that means right now that would be almost 50 years, a half, half of 100 years right there. Uh, they were <laughs> yeah. just down just a few weeks ago. We were able to name one of the buildings, a flagship building after them. Yeah. But it's all about building the kingdom. Yeah. And I saw those faces. I said, you know. Yeah, it's wonderful to have the facilities. You've got to have facilities. You've got to have course. a place to sleep people right. and to clothe people and to feed people right. and all that. But to know that those lives, probably so many of them were, tra were changed, uh, not just for here on planet Earth, yeah. but also for eternity. For eternity. And, our, and yeah. our, by the way, yeah. our, our uh, byline is no one is homeless. Right. And we mean that double-sorted way. Yeah. Now, first of all, no one's homeless here on planet Earth. That right. people have, you yeah. know, God tells us in 1 Peter 1, 3, yeah. he says he's given us everything pertaining to life. Yeah. That means he knows that we need a job. He right. finally knows we need a place to stay, food yeah. on the table, right? That's right. So, Those necessities, uh, yeah. I'm thinking, that, so here, here are people just beyond that, though. They're getting food. They're getting their necessities made, yeah. made here. But they also have an eternal home. Amen. Jesus said he's going to prepare a place for us, right? I'll be back. <laughs> so he was probably the first one before Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I'll be back. I'm going to go prepare a place. I'll be back. I'll take you there. You'll be there with me forever. But he also prepares places here and now for ministry. That's a good point. So, yeah, 100 years ago, most everybody who was there on day one, most of them are on the other side at Amen. this point. That's you know? correct. That's and correct. again, it's that next generation and the next generation. So talk about the vision. I mean, until Jesus comes back, I don't know if we have another 100 years, well, but well, until know, he comes back, you, what's the vision? You don't know <laughs> what the Lord has in store. Yeah. And, you know, and we live in a wicked, fallen world. world. Yeah, you yeah. know, we're seeing on the news even more and more and more and more shootings, more killings. And uh, even locally here in South Florida, we've had a massive of children killing their parents. When I say children killing their parents, some are as young as 12 years old and some are as old as 40 years old. And so we do have a wicked, fallen world, but in the midst of that is his church. And, and I believe that for many decades, uh, and this is only my personal opinion, the church kind of like has, lost, has dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. When I say the church, it's the people of God collectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we're not really pointing, not, not that we should be out there snake handling and beating mm -hmm. the Bible as a Bible thumper, Right. But at least stand for the yeah. things of God. Stand for truth. And that's what this ministry yeah. has done for yeah. the last 100 years, is stand for the truth of God. Come, you know, good or bad, right. uh, up or down, markets crashing, markets going through the roof, right. uh, hurricanes, wars, 
pestilence, and then obviously the last three years we've been dealing with COVID. Yeah. And for any center in America that's dealing with homelessness, people yeah. experiencing homelessness, COVID really put a, a ratchet. I mean, it, it, it messed up a lot of people's lives. You know, yeah, people right. lost their lives. You know, right. I had dear friends that lost, uh, yeah. lost life with COVID yeah. and some people in ministry that I yeah. know. Right. But we're on the front lines. We're never called the front line people, but yet we're dealing with people that come right off the street. Right. We're talking about people. Yeah. We don't know where they've been. We don't know right. who they've been in contact with. That's so now true. how right. in the world do we get to test everybody? Right. How, do, how do we get to isolate or quarantine people? Which yeah. we did. Right. We, uh, I'm, 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 I'm amazed at our, our wonderful staff because yeah, they you got an amazing it, team yeah they took it up and it took yeah. it to a whole nother level and what a better time to share the love of jesus christ with hurting people that were uncertain that were losing loved ones that were in the hospital being intubated and so on right. and and through these last three years yeah we've lost a skip a little bit in our donations as far as the generosity yeah. of people right. because they've been suffering they've been yeah. home they've been That's out of right. work but we've been able to weather this tremendous storm, and we don't know what the fall has. Or That's next a testament year has to God's there. faithfulness for no, sure. No, no, you know, no, 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 no doubt like, He's faithful. <laughs> yeah, when you talk in vision, you know, I, I think, you know, what is our vision for the next 10 years, 15 years? How many years has God given me here? Maybe, yeah. maybe five, 10 years more. And then what do we want to accomplish? Well, we do have a wonderful vision of permanent supportive housing, mm -hmm. that we have a big property, we have a church on it right now, right. But it's got about five acres, yeah. and uh, what we what we really need for, for all of our properties, we're kind of big, we're in both counties, yeah. we have like 46 properties, right. we have three big main centers for, for women and children and for men, yeah. uh, we have a thrift store operation, yeah. we have trucks out in the community picking up people's clothing and furnishings that we either use in our centers or yeah. Uh, we sell them at a right. thrift store right. to raise money for the program. Yeah. So, so it's both ways. And also, when people are getting back on their feet, you now have you supply go. for them to, to set up shop again. Yeah, set when up they, their home. Yeah. When they get their apartment or their place where they're going to stay, then we can give them, you know, through the generosity of our donors, right. uh, not brand new, you know, two thousand dollar furnishings, but right. good yeah. furnishings. Right that they'd be proud of, or you and I would be proud of, yeah, to have in our exactly. house, you know, yeah. so they get started out right. Then we have other focus groups uh, for men and for women, and they're mentor groups, or they're helping them find, find uh, finish them off when you get out of the program. Oh, yeah. They will do drives, and they'll maybe get all the uh, kitchen uh, appliances, mm -hmm. get bedding for the kids, uh, get special items that wouldn't just normally come from a thrift store, right. or they can call their own brand new for, uh, dishes, and brand new pots and pans, and right. brand new this and that. And I'm telling you, Jeff, when you see someone come to us cowering, I mean, yeah. actually cowering yeah. from being abused, yeah. a, a, a woman. Yeah. Maybe she has three kids, has two different daddies with right. three kids. Yeah. Uh, she's confused. She's broken. She doesn't know if she can make it. But boy, when she gets in that good, Holy Spirit, Christ-centered uh, atmosphere, place, yeah. then they know they yeah. get their food. They get, their, they get counseling. They get special needs for their children met. Uh, they start getting that, hey, I can do this. Right. I'm going to get this done. And yeah. then you see them getting their own place yeah. and, and, and moving into a, a few weeks ago. I was in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, I, and this happens to me more and more as time goes by, I guess because I've been here so stinking long. Right. But, but I was in a parking lot. <laughs> I was in a parking lot. I was getting ready to go into a store that I yeah. go to. And yeah. here comes a lady. Out. She had two carts full of, of food, and she had little ones with her. I guess they're like 10 to 12 years old, something like right, that. Right. She goes, Mr. Brummett, Mr. Brummett. And yeah. I said, what? She goes, Reverend Brummett, don't you remember me? I said, and I didn't know her. Yeah. She, she said, I was in the Women's Center. Hundreds of faces Yeah, five a years ago. Basis, I was in, the, yeah. I was in the, you know, the Women's Center five yeah. years ago. Yeah. And uh, you guys helped me. I said, I want you to know that my kids were real small back then, but now they're growing up. They're doing very good in school. Praise God. I've got a great job. I've got a great apartment. You know that. And so yeah. that, that to me says, does it work, Ron? Is right. what God's right. work? Yes, it is working. That gets you through the tough days, too. Not yes. every day is easy. In ministry, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. That's what I'd be saying. But we're in the people business. And people have issues. And again, Again, this is some of the folks that are just bankrupt. But physically, spiritually, emotionally, they're very needy. So, again, it takes a team. It takes resources to pour into these people's lives. And it even takes some time for them to get it. But now, five years later, you see that yeah. they're in a different place. And it's like, God's like, hey, let you see some of the fruit, right? Right. And just a, just a, a while ago, we had a graduation service. Uh, we try to do this once a year for, yeah. for every year that I've been here. But... Yeah. Uh, last couple of years have been very tough to get everyone assembled. We don't want to have that, so we did some virtual things. It's, but it's not the same yeah. to have formerly homeless men and women gather together. They're in caps and gowns. Yeah. 
They're yeah. in a giant venue where they have friends and family. Our yeah. supporters come to it, but we also yeah. have restored families. And, yeah. and uh, I'm going to say restored families. I'm talking about the grandparents, yeah. you know, the grandkids and all. I yeah. mean, really big grand. Uh, maybe have 10 people from one family. They burned bridges, and now they're there to, when they cross the finish line and get that graduation. That's awesome. And, and, yeah. And, yeah, and to see that happen and say, you know something, Lord, these 50 people, if that was the only people, yeah. Not, that's great. Now we do much more than that, of, of course. Of course, though. yeah, yeah. We could probably do a 13-part series every year on where are they now and tracking, and you know, reality TV is a big deal. But this is Christian reality TV. This is the worker bees who are doing it, right? right. So, um, you know, it's amazing. I know you've had some health issues too. Your wife, Marilyn, we we interviewed her yesterday. But what a story! How God brought you together like 20 years ago, and again, you being here almost 32 years now, you've seen some things. Right. But uh, it's all about love and action, right? It's word and deed, right? So talk a little bit about that, how you guys have a team. And uh, you had your director's meeting today. We got some footage of you guys talking about the different centers and big decisions you guys have to make as a team, right? So. Right, you know, well, the Lord, he, he's such a great example of leadership. Yeah. You know, people don't think, well, you mean, well, no, he, he, he picked out the people he wanted around him, even some bad apple there, yeah. some bad apple. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the way that he led people, you know, he, he was a true shepherd. You know, a shepherd's in front of the flock, leading right. them. Right. Now, the, the cohort, the He's not behind him pushing them by that or, way. He's or leading, leading them. Yeah, or right? beating them. You know, the carrot <laughs> and the stick kind of a thing. And <laughs> right. been very gracious. Yeah. Uh, very, very, the Lord's been so gracious in having the right people, uh, you know, sit in the right chairs. Uh, all the time that I've been here, before myself, it was the Jacobs I mentioned right. earlier. I was Got Dr. the Hall Drake. of Fame here behind yeah, us. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's, there's some pictures. There's Miss J back there. Anyway, yeah, yeah. so having said that, I mean, they really were tra trailblazers. The mission yeah. was about ready to go under. When I say go under, yeah. they owed tons of money. They didn't know this was, they owed it even when they came on board. Wow. They found out a few years later, and then they got a lawyer involved. They went down to the courthouse. They were basically going to be at the mercy of the owners of the property. Right. Uh, long story short. Some people owned the property where the mission was sitting at the time. Right. They were in arrear. The mission had not paid these people for years and years and years. So back then it was like sixty, seventy thousand dollars. Yeah. Might have been three million or four right. million dollars yeah, to yeah, the mission, yeah. or ten right. million dollars right. because right. they didn't have that. Right. Uh, very, very mouth, hand to mouth kind yeah. of thing. Right. And the Jacobs, the reason he was willing, to, he was able to make it here. He wasn't getting a salary. Yeah. He was a gospel singer. Right. And uh, his name is Frank Jacobs. You can look up him on the internet. Uh, <laughs> but he's great, tremendous tenor voice. And right. so he made his bread and butter by singing gospel concerts and all that. So they were in this, me this uh, meeting. The yeah. owners had moved out of the area, right. and they were there. Right. And But they told the judge, you know, we haven't used that property in over 20 years. Right. We really don't need it. We're just going to donate it to the mission. Wow. God's grace again. Oh, God's provision. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. That yeah. was back in 74, 75, just yeah. a couple years after they started here. And I came up under them. I say I came up under them. I looked at them, and I, I really appreciated Right. I could see Jesus in them. Yeah. You know, I visited them at their house. Uh, there's a whole story there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just felt like here are two, uh, two people that just stuck their hand up and said, here I am, God yeah. send me. Right. And because of that, then yeah. the mission started to grow and grow. And now we've added clinics, health clinics. We have a, a school that yeah. we never had before. It's a tremendous school where kids, about 130 kids in there up to sixth grade. Right. They, it's not when I say a Christian school or all Christian curriculum, but it's a right. Christian-based school. That's good. They have chapels and all that, but they are just, just to see these kids. They're from the inner city. Yeah. Most of the kids their same age can't even read or write right. in the third or fourth grade. And here yeah. they're getting everything, the tablets and all right. the technology. I right. think, wow, wow. Yeah. Somebody yeah. years ago came from the north, yeah. came down here. They had a horse-drawn carriage. Yeah. That's how they started the ministry <laughs> here in, in Miami. Wow. And, and, and going down, then they hit that. Yeah. That was in 22. Then the big hurricane came. That's yeah. before all of our time, but it was tremendous hurricane. It just yeah. tore Lovely. up everything. Yeah. Yeah. And they were the only um, uh, social agency, they call it social agency, to feed people. Yeah. And so they're even back then, they're doing two or 3,000 um, wow. people a day. Wow. Now, fast forward, you know, 100 years, 
Yeah. Uh, we're serving about 1,000 people every single day. Wow, uh, that's During amazing. the course of a year, we're probably serving over 20,000 people with all our different touch points, our different mm -hmm. outreaches. We're not just we're not just taking people off the street. Right, right. Okay, they're just not yeah. coming into the into off the street. They're, we're actually going into the communities, into yeah. neighborhoods, yeah. Uh, telling people about the Lord. Yeah. And I'm talking about neighborhoods where maybe they're one paycheck be from, from becoming homeless. Yeah. Yeah. The mom has to think, right. do I put money in the gas tank or do, right. I, do right. I pay the bill? You know right. what I'm saying? Exactly. We're going to talk a lot more about evangelism. Stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews from some of the folks that are working on staff here, some of the, the people that are on the team that have been through the program just supporters of the ministry so you can see how God is using Miami Rescue Mission to answer the call, shine their light here, and how the ripple effects are going far and wide. Keep watching. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call on Overcomers TV and some other Christian television networks and satellite channels. We're so excited to be in Miami Rescue Mission, The Caring Place, with Reverend Ron Brummett, talking about evangelism next. So, Ron, you know, it's been the Miami Rescue Mission. you got the Broward Outreach Centers, but now it's officially known The Caring Place. That's right. And when you share the gospel, you're caring for people, right? So let's talk about some of the evangelism efforts here through The Caring Place. Well, that is the whole crux of what we do here is to reach people for Christ mm -hmm. and then offer discipleship programs to help them take to a next level. Yeah. You know, just like in a Christian walk, you don't have to have an addiction. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a life-controlling issue that's just burning a hole in your brain kind of thing yeah. to need Christ. And then once you, once you make that decision to come to a saving knowledge of the Lord, in other mm -hmm. words, he paid for my sins, I accept that. If I accept him, God's going to give me a new, new lease on life, and right. then I'm not just not getting a ticket out of hell. I've right. got a graceful ticket into heaven. Amen. And, graceful. And, 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 and to have a better life yeah. here, too. Yeah. So, but you right. have to learn and be discipled by somebody. Right. You know, go into your local church setting where they have classes, or you start really becoming a student of the Word. Uh, you know, YouTube is a friend if you find the right people to listen to. Right. Hopefully they listen to overcomers. <laughs> right? and, uh, yeah. and so... That has been really the heart. Like I said earlier, a couple came from Ohio. They wanted to come down and spread the gospel of Jesus, but they want to do it in a real life way, you know. Uh, and for us, when we're dealing with the homeless and people that are experiencing homelessness, right. uh, when someone comes in off the street or someone that we're talking to on the street, and you know this, Chuck, and yeah. most people do not know this, if they're hungry, if they're tired, yeah. if they're sweaty, if they're dirty, if their clothes haven't been changed, if they have uh, terrible hygiene on them, right. and you come up there and say, hey, brother, John 316 them, all right? <laughs> Just get them on there and say, you know, for God to love the world. And, and that's what you yeah. do. Yeah. They probably heard that a thousand times. Yeah, they know the Bible better than us. Sometimes, yeah, Sometimes yeah. They do. So, Sometimes so, they do. so, yeah. what? Is, what it has to take place? Well, Paul says that we are a living epistle. Yeah, that we're living letters. That yeah. our life is going to be, you know, don't be just a, a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word too. And right. that the whole fruit and root and and uh, works versus faith, all that kind of stuff, it's all balled into one. Because right. if you really care for someone, and we have four uh, values here. Number yeah. one is compassion. Yeah. And that is love in action. Amen. And there's, Jesus and, and there's hope. Yeah. That is expect the best. Yeah. Then there's restoration, which right. is restoring, which is lost, or even sometimes gaining some things you never had. Amen. And then total transformation. So those four key words, compassion, yeah. hope, restoration, and transformation. Beautiful. And uh, that's yeah. been, our, been our mantra. But how do we do that? Well, we're doing it through the Word of God and through the person of Christ. Yeah. That's how we believe. You know, right. others may have a different Don't be path. conformed to the world, but be there transformed go, by the renewing of the mind, right? So, so, so faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. That's, that's what that means. And in and, 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 and today's yeah. world, okay, yeah. especially when you're dealing with programs, nonprofit programs, you have the NGO, non-government you know, organizations, you have the government organizations. Right. And unfortunately, I have sensed and seen that the more government gets involved, mm -hmm. it, it seems like, the, the, the less human it becomes. In yeah. other words, people become more numbers and outcomes become this and that. Yeah. So, so the people say, well, how, what kind of outcomes are you having, Reverend Brummett? I mean, yeah. you, you're serving all these people every single day and, and just tell me about, is it 30%, 40%, 60%? Right. Now, one thing that the world will not understand, mm -hmm. and uh, Paul says it, that the natural man receives not the things of God because right. they're what? Spiritually discerned. That's they don't right. Have, right. you got to have the spirit so, to understand so, so, it. It's so, foolishness to those yes, that are perishing. Yes, perishing. So yeah. what happens is 
we believe that everyone that comes in, our success ratio is not is built on on kingdom metrics, not just earthly right. metrics. Exactly. But everyone that comes in there, have they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ plainly? Right. Right. And I don't mean beating it down their throat or right. sitting in a forced chapel. It's a chapel. simple message. It just really is. It's a simple thing. Yeah. God loves you and has a plan for you, that kind of and thing. And he's willing to forgive us. That's to me. Yeah, to me, gift. even yeah. if the person, you know, doesn't make that decision, hey, yeah. that's all that's required. Yeah. Right? It that's didn't right. go down there and beat them, save. It yeah. says go and what? Preach the gospel Preach to every living creature. And that's then it. if they accept proclaim, it. Proclaim, declare. Yeah. And if they accept it, then to disciple them, right? right? Then to teach them. So you That's first right. preach and then teach. It's spaghetti and meatballs, right? Amen. Peanut butter and jelly. They go, go hand there in hand. There you go. There you go. <laughs> what, what else could we come up? Uh, peanut butter and chocolate. How about that? Okay. I had to come up some with Some people do bananas and peanut butter, uh, right? Banana and peanut butter sandwiches. But, so, uh, yeah. so, so evangelism, and we're not, we're not like having big evangelism rallies. But everything that we do, now, four times a year, up, up until last year, but we, re we restarted this, we have outreaches in the community. So we have yeah. a Thanksgiving on Good Friday, right. which is really when we celebrate uh, Jesus washing the feet of disciples and him being crucified. Yeah. And then we have uh, our summer outreaches for the kids, back to school summer outreach, where we do book bags and things for the children. And we get book bags and, and things for the adults, too. They're going yeah, back to school. That's good. Then we have our Thanksgiving banquet, which is in November. It's called the Great Thanksgiving Banquet, yeah. where we'll serve thousands of people and give away thousands of boxes of food. And you're reaching lots of people with then, this stuff. Then yeah. you have, and then you have Christmas outreach, oh, yeah. which is about, we give about 700 to 800 families, wow. okay, entire families, uh, toys and other things, and we have prayer tents and so on. So everything yeah. is revolving around right. the person of Jesus Christ. And when people, and, and this goes for churches too, or any, any nonprofit ministry that right. says they're a Christian ministry, yeah. you can either look at the earthly metrics, right. which is how many people you serve, right. uh, how many pounds the of food The hard numbers, out. right, everything on a spreadsheet. It, and, and that, that can yeah. be good. I mean, you got to have some effort there. you got to have somebody, if yeah. I'm giving you a dollar, you show me what you it. did with the dollar, okay? That's good, yeah. And we want to have good. that. Yeah. But that is worldly metrics. Right. Okay, Good point. And, and and they and they use worldly uh, methodologies, you yeah. know. So leadership is different. Leadership is not just build somebody up. Leadership get the job done, right. meet your quota, yeah. do your numbers. Right. All right. In earth, in kingdom, it's like how can I develop you as a person? So you meet all the potential that God meant you to be, Amen. and for His glory, yeah. you know. So uh, you know, you just don't get prideful and say, "Hey, look what I accomplished." That's right. And I was able to serve a million meals last year, and we right. were able to do this. And I've been here 32 years, and whatever yeah. your that's in the rearview mirror. You got a yeah, yeah, windshield. Yeah, yeah. You got to keep moving forward. What's in front of you right here, right now, right? Yeah. yeah. So that that for, so for us is not only not only to evangelize people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Soft way, hard way. Yeah. All right. So you're going to do it both ways with, yeah. with just secret friendly kind of Christianity, or right. you're going to do it right in your face. You know, do you right. want to make a decision today for Christ kind right. of thing? Right. Yeah. But the idea then is to to teach them, and then when you teach people that are coming in our programs, not just what it means to live for Christ, and, and unfortunately, and myself included. You know, I, I got to get a tickle out of, uh, out of some of the men. Uh, we have devotion every morning, yeah. okay, for, the, for, for all of our centers. And uh, so one morning, this one particular guy was standing outside the chapel doors. And you could hear him. He's talking all street talk. You know, hey, man, yo, bro, I just tell you this. And just talking a lot of street nonsense, right? Yeah, right, right, right. right. So he, we're in I used chapel. to think that was talking in tongues when I was able to talk with the yeah. brothers 21 years ago in Cracktown. I was like, yo, 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 need a toy, what's up, what's up? And I read the Bible for the first time, talking in tongues. I'm talking ghetto. Ah. That's like tongues. Well, I was like, you're talking ghetto. <laughs> that's it. So, so here's what happens, though. Yeah. So, so I call him. I'll call him Johnny. Yeah. So Johnny's been out there talking all this stuff, right? And, but he's made a decision to follow Christ. So he's in a good space. Yeah. All right? And it's tough because you know when you make a decision to follow Christ, there's there's something called the enemy. Oh, yeah. You know, the devil. He's not going to sit back and watch. No, no. It says we wrestle not against <laughs> flesh and blood, but against principalities yeah. and powers, right? Against right. rulers or darkness, against yeah. spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And that is true. Right. So, so anyway, so he, he's off the street, been off there maybe a couple months. He's talking all that street talk, which is normally, you know, getting saved is taking you out of the world, and sanctification is taking the world out of you. you Amen. Of well okay, said. Yeah, that's yeah. a yeah. That's a process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so having said it, so now, so I call him up to pray. Yeah. All right. So here he's he's been out there talking and stuff. It's as if the man walked into a time machine, and went back to 16th century England, and now he's brothers. Let us bow our hearts in our heads. And Father God, and he starts talking. In New King James yeah, English. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, but that's how we learn. Yeah. You know, we, we how do we learn to pray? Really, yeah. we mimic. Right. Yeah. You know, and so in different cultures and different ethnicities. That's the only question in the Gospels where the disciples asked Jesus. 
teach us how to pray. Right. They didn't ask him about any, how to do anything no. else, but teach us how to pray. That was, yeah, that's good. And he gave, and so, so the idea is, what the point I'm making is that it, part of evangelism, part of teaching people, is, is looking at them right where they are, mm -hmm. not what you think they should be in your mind, because that's what the Christian stereotype is. Right. No, God's going to take that human being right. and, and and wash him in the precious blood of the Lamb. Going to rest going to restore him, fill him with the Spirit, if that's what the person desires in, in right. meekness. And then the change starts happening. And that person may have that same personality. Yeah. Could still have a little street in them, you know? Yeah, a little, that's little, true. Little yeah, street. I mean, there's, we bring a lot. We're like a yeah. lint ball, man. We just yeah. bring, we catch, we collect things along the way. Bad theology from movies or other, you know, it's like a smorgasbord out there. I say spiritual indigestion. So sometimes you got to yeah. sort through, you know, and again, it's a process. It takes time. But again, that amazing grace is, you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. And uh, they may still have a lucky rabbit's foot in their pocket, pocket or whatever they're yeah, clinging yeah, to, yeah, some yeah, other yeah, idols, yeah. and it takes time to remove that, that all is, that. That is, yeah. that's taking the world out of somebody. Yeah, yeah. And that takes longer than people right. think. I wish in my own yeah. life, and maybe you in your own life too, Chuck, yeah. is that yeah. I could have said a magic prayer, yeah. and God would have just poof on me. <laughs> and then, and then I would have just been, hey, I'm, I don't need it. I'm perfect. Like I, a one and done thing, Yeah, right? I'm done. Yeah. I'm going forward. Now, he does that sometimes. Yeah, there's now, some amazing there, testimonies There are some amazing testimonies. When a person hit the street running, they don't look back, and they're on fire for God. And 20 years later, they're still on fire for God. Yeah. I mean, that happens. That doesn't happen. I don't see that happen often. But I tell you what, we probably become spiritually prideful, most of us. I know for me, just the mere fact that I'm one decision away from stupid keeps me humble, right? You know, we've, we've got some victories, and we're getting better. Like you said, we're getting better. Still not perfect, but we're getting better. But uh, it keeps you humble when you realize that, you know, we're just still, you know, sinful desires. Well, you know, you the know, verse yeah. that people like to quote all the time, Romans 8, 28. Yeah. I, what is it? All know, things work together for all good. All things work together for those that love God who are called according to his purpose, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you look at that. Well, obviously not all things are good. Right. They can't be. Right. Death's not good. Crack cocaine is not good. Right. Dogs you know, running away. You know, yeah. Living yeah. on the street is not good. Right. Right. right? Beating right. somebody up is not good. Right. You know, stealing is not good. But the, the but people forget the next verse. Right. They don't include that, and that's like it's called taking things out of context. Right. Right. So the next verse, though, it says, uh, "Who are called according to his purpose, yeah. that right. the person of God, right. it says man, may be conformed right. to the very image." of Christ. Right. So everything that's happening around us, everything that's happened to us or through us or for us or against us, right. in the context, is not all good. Right. But it's helping you be but, more like but, Jesus. But God yeah. can take that, and if you're willing, right. and you're humble, and yeah. you're willing to put out your white flag of surrender, yeah. and say, Lord, I'm done, you know, yeah. then he can start taking all those things and turn them around. And you see this happen, yeah. Christians and non-Christians. Right. Somebody might lose their son to a pedophile yeah. or something horrible happened yeah, to a child. Right, right, then yeah. they start a foundation to do, yeah, you know, you see right. these people trying to do something. Their Why? misery becomes their ministry. There you go. Yeah. And there they're you trying go. to make a difference in another right. family's, another mom's life, right. another dad's life, or they don't lose their kid. And for us, that is the, not at the, the, the core of everything, but we do want to make sure that right. when people come to our programs, our residential programs, right. they've accepted the Lord, right. uh, they've been ministered to, they've been discipled now. Right. Do you have the ability within you right. to evangelize somebody yeah. else? Because now they have a compassion for it. Been there, done that, have the T-shirt, right? And that's the thing. So whatever, if God pulls you from the muck and the mire and puts your feet on the on the rock, can you, can you now you can help someone else get out of the muck and the mire. So we started a, a group called The Crew, yeah. and this is local churches right. that um, people come together, different denominations, but we focus on the, the major you know, parts of Christianity. Yeah. Then some of our own men or women will go out, and we will go out to the to the encampments. Yeah. We're not talking about your homeless staying around the, by the library or maybe at the local supermarket or something. We're talking right. about homeless encampments, okay, right, Chuck? Right, We're talking right. about old school, rough living right. encampments. You better not go down there unless you know somebody, okay? Or right. you want to be, or you are homeless yourself. Right. So they go. So they're going out to these encampments, and they are now. We have to take our van with us. This is real evangelism. Oh yeah. We're getting into rubber the, meets the road kind well, of stuff. Well, we're getting into the meat. So, in one yeah. one time uh, last year, I believe it was, a group went out to this encampment. They've been going several times. Well, the drug dealers and the people that were keeping the others in bondage, they came up and was accosting. Yeah. There was a group of about seven of them, and told them basically get out of there. 
Because right. you don't, if you, you're not here to mess with these people. They act, when I say they, the people that were used to them coming actually got up and defended them and told, told the uh, drug dealers there, uh, listen, these people aren't here to hurt you or to hurt us. They're here to help us. Leave right, them alone. Right. Now, that's the protection of the Holy Spirit. Oh, now, yeah. I'm Amen. not saying everybody needs to get a part of a group to go down to the most dangerous parts of town. That <laughs> right, makes right. some may say, yeah, hey, you got to be called to it. You, and you, if you, you are, yeah, yeah God's provision but that, will be That, there. to me, yeah. that is the full yeah. circle of evangelism. Yeah. Yeah. You were broken. Right. You were begging. Right. You were busted. Yeah. You had no hope. You had right. no future, no direction. You, you thought your life was useless. You yeah. should have never been born. Probably thought suicide. I mean, the whole right. nine yards. Right. Right. And then for that person to come and have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then for the Lord to put a calling on his life right. or her life and right. say, listen, I'm not done with you, son. I'm not done with your daughter. Right. Through you, many right. are going to come to know the Lord. Right. And in my own life, right. if you would have told me that. Well, that's your testimony. Ago, that's the testimony. And that's what God uses. We love preaching. Believers love preaching. But it's bug spray to the unbeliever. They don't want to be preached at. It's like everybody's preaching at them. Bah, 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 bah. But like... Revelation is 12.10, right? He says, the accuser of the brethren accuses us before God know. night and day because we all have these things that we're shameful of. And he's like, well, look at what they did. But verse 11 says, they overcame him, the evil one, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So what you're describing here is somebody who's got a story. And now they can, with authority, speak into somebody else's life because I've been there and Jesus right. did it for me. Right. Jesus can do it for you. Are you interested? And that's, that's the most powerful part of it because you're not learning it from a church pew. Yeah. It's not something your dad or mom told you. Right. It's not just, and, and I'm not putting that down because there's yeah, people there's that love the Lord. There's lots of ways, lots of approaches. Lo Lord yeah. that love the Lord with yeah. all their heart, with yeah. all their strength, all their might, and never yeah. did really right. anything what a normal person would consider bad. Right. Maybe they did a little something. That was like a preventative grace. Yeah. He kept us yeah, from yeah. I mean, he, that they, far. They yeah. You know, we kind of categorize sin, yeah, don't yeah, we? Yeah, so we yeah. say this sin is this sin and this sin. And I know when you're on the street, uh, there is still a level, there's still a hierarchy. In other words, uh, you'll hear some, you know, I was on there for two years, but at least I didn't do this. Right, right, yeah. And then a person says, well, I didn't do this, but then I did this. And then, right. then it's a progression. It's a tar baby. You get trapped in it. Right. Oh, then all of a sudden you never steal, but now you're boosting food at a 7-Eleven or something right. because right. you're hungry. Right. Uh, you would never hurt somebody else. Yeah, but you stole from them when they were sleeping. Right. Uh, you know, right. people get their shoes taken when they're sleeping when they're homeless. I mean, it's wow. pretty rough out there, you know. Wow. But, but when yeah. that person has a personal encounter with the Lord, you can't. You can dispute it. You can say, I don't believe in what you believe in, but you can't take away from the authenticity right. of that person's personal testimony and say, listen, you don't know where I was or where I came from and how right. gracious God was to me, and I owe him everything. And you become like Paul. I'm a debtor yeah. you know, to everyone, the Jew and the uh, Jew first and the Gentile, because right. it's the power of God into salvation Amen. Right, is the Amen. gospel that's of Jesus power. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how... Good. And when I see that happening, and I mean in, in a non-forced way. Right, natural. Just, just na natural. It's a natural it's flow from your life. Yeah. Comes, it's supernatural, <laughs> but it's a natural way, okay? So I'm not Good just kind of supernatural. Good point. Yeah. So, so uh, that's, that's pretty much yeah. how we envision our evangelism, that right. it's not just come, when people coming in the doors. Yeah. It's also all the outreaches, what yeah. I mentioned earlier. So out the outreaches, we'll have Christian music. We'll have great food. We'll have giveaways right. uh, to get people to come. And most of the time, will you invite the homeless? Like Jesus said, go into highways right. and the byways. Right. They don't Compel come to them wedding. to come in. Yeah. Well, that's what we yeah. do. We actually will take them in vans yeah. and, and buses and bring them there. Yeah. And they'll hear a message. We have a sign-up tent. Do they want to get in? Do they want to know, know more about it? Right. And usually, it's almost a try it before you buy it. We right. tell them, listen. You're going to come in here. you got to follow some rules. I mean, yeah, you you right. can't have anarchy here, okay? Yeah, it's, yeah. But it's going to be very laxical. We right. want you to rest a few days, right. get some food in you. Let's right. get some clothes on you. Let's get your hair cut, get you right. some beauty hygiene items, right. all that right. good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then see what you think about us in two or three days. Yeah. Because anyone that's coming off a really bad run, yeah. Yeah, a couple of days at least, at least two or three days to get in, in, to get back to somewhat of normalcy. Yeah. If you're a drinker, that yeah. could be even seven, eight, eight days, right. depending on where you are and how much you, how much drugs you did or how much drinking yeah, you did. Right. Yeah. And then let them the know, let people stuff, yeah. know. And especially yeah. when we have the outreaches. Right. Uh, I mentioned we did like 700, 800 families. When I'm talking about families, I'm talking right. about two or three kids. And, and a lot of them had cars, but you know, they, they were again, they wouldn't have enough money for, for Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they used money for their gas in their cars and get to work and not have any money for the children. Right. And because of the generosity, because of people 
can see beyond their own two hands yeah. and say, you know, there's other people out there hurting. And, and you've heard stories like this, too, where children will give up their birthday presents or give up their Christmas or their Hanukkah presents right. because they want to help another child that doesn't have anything. And, and when you see that kind of compassion, starting at such an early age, you think, God, use that person. You know, we have one family Amen. that's Amen. been with us 12 years. Wow. The kids have grown up. I've seen them grow up. Every Thanksgiving, they're called, and it's a shout out to the elegance, so in case they listen to this, <laughs> all right, Luke and the whole yeah. group there. Mm -hmm. But they've been here, I mean, they're, they're in college now. I mean, yeah. the kids are, but they still come out every year. They do their own fundraising page where they raise thousands of dollars through their own family to help mm -hmm. the homeless. Uh, they just seem, and you can tell the family cares about us. Now, do they have affluence? Yes. Mm -hmm. But they, beyond their physical trappings, they know that there's a spiritual need in the community. There's yeah. a physical need in the community. Right. They want to be a part of that. And be a part of it. And, yeah. and when, you, when you said earlier about what our team does and how our staff is, tremendous staff, but we have over 9,000 volunteers every oh, year yeah. that come in. Uh, we're serving close to a million meals. I mean, that's yeah. just, those yeah. again, now those are worldly metrics. Right. So what is the kingdom impact, okay? Yeah. Well, because we were able to share the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to 20,000 people. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. You know, it's right. not that that. There's that we, call to sow seeds, yeah, yeah, and we're yeah. sowing, and we're watering, and, and God gives the increase. That's good. That's good. Hey, stay tuned. We're going to talk just a little bit more about uh, evangelism with some of the staff. We've got lots of interviews from folks that are part of the team his wife Marilyn, some of the staff, some of the folks that are in the program and now on staff. It's amazing. It's all about sharing the gospel, shining your light, and giving God all the glory in heaven. Keep watching. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, show host, executive producer, Overcomers TV, Frank Speech, Apple TV, Roku, you name it, there's a platform, we're on it. And we're talking about discipleship with Reverend Ron Brummett here at the Miami Rescue Mission, the Broward Outreach Center, uh, the Caring Place. So, Ron, discipleship, it's a big word, church word. How do you guys describe discipleship? What does it mean around well, here? Well, in our previous uh, little talks together, it's, uh, you can preach to someone and you can get the hand raised up and you have them walk down the aisle, yeah. but then what happens to them? Now, with our population, you know, if they, unless they're in one of our centers, they, they're going to just walk back out to the street. And so what do you do for those type of people that have no place that they can really call a safe haven right. where they can sit down and, and start learning? And that's one of the greatest things about our programs is that, you know, there's a great move right now called Housing First mm -hmm. where uh, throughout the nation, it's been going on for at least seven or eight years, mm -hmm. where the concept is, and this is where the worldly wisdom comes in, the concept is, we don't need to do anything for any homeless person except find them a house, mm -hmm. find them an apartment that's affordable to them. Right. So you find Joe's on the street, okay? He comes to you for help, and all you do, you don't care about his spiritual condition, his physical condition. You care, but I mean, it's not the priority. It's right. not the preeminence. Right. Right. The preeminence thing is, I need to get you a place to stay, buddy. Mm -hmm. If I get you a house, all your problems are going to disappear. You're out. You're out of the neighborhood. You're out of the. Right. You know. You're out of people's vision. You become invisible in a different way, and uh, that's what we're going to do for Interesting. you. Interesting. Yeah. So that's that's where they, that's where and that is a big mantra. I mean, most Christian, non-Christian homeless centers have been corralled into that housing first model. Now we just don't believe. Like, do we have programs similar to that? Yeah, we have different tracks, mm -hmm. but for our discipleship programs, that's yeah. a volunteer program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not housing first. It's housing next. The first is Jesus first, right, all right, right and right. learn about what does it mean in a, in a sense, get plugged into a local church by which we love our local churches that yeah, have partnered amen. with us. Yeah, they did uh, a lot of they the work. Come out, they come out and do, um, uh, they'll do meals, they'll do groups, they'll do fun nights, like we have a, a Father's Night, Mother's Night, whatever, we'll have all these different things out for the, for the men and the women to enjoy right. through the generosity of the church people that come out. Right. And uh, so that's that's really good. But we want them planted into a church. In other right. words, it's kind of cool when I go out to speak at one of the churches. Yeah. Here comes Jimmy from 10 years ago, who's now an usher. 
right. in that local church that yep. he was planted into, Amen. you know, yep. 10 years ago, and he's still on fire for God, and the yeah. people are all looking up to him. Hey, if anything, Jimmy know it. What do you think right. about this? Well, Jimmy know it. You know, he's right. just one of those go-to kind of guys in that yeah. church setting. Right. So uh, that is at the heart of what we do. It's not just to say, hey, we've got so many people raised right. their hands. Wasn't that Matthew 6, 33? Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which is how to do things the right way, and all these other things will be added unto you. And you just got done talking about food and clothing and all those things that we can easily worry about. And the only, and, the only and, chapter says don't worry four times yeah, as well. Yeah. And, and, and another thing that really, depending on how your, your theology is, okay, is uh, I do believe that we live in a fallen world, a yeah. broken world, and I think it's a demon energized world. Now, oh, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a snake handling believer, okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm not a gonna. A third of the angels this. fell from heaven, and they're roaming around. Right, they're wreaking right. havoc. So right. there is definitely some demon action yeah, so, going so, so, on. So, and, and you see it in yeah. the New Testament. Yeah. You know, if you right. read the book of Mark, and Acts, I mean, yeah. and, but Mark especially with Jesus, yeah. Yeah. He, he hits the he hits the he hits the uh, ground running in first chapter about yeah. casting out demons. Right, right. And when the way he talked, yeah. it wasn't like an afterthought. Right. It was even in Matthew. He taught. He says, "When you give, when you pray, when you fast." Right. And then he talked about casting out demons, and the disciples said, "We tried, we tried, we tried, and we just couldn't get rid of these demons from this this, this right. possessed person." Right. And he says, "Because this type of demon did what? It's not just fasting, not just prayer, but prayer and fasting." Right. So right. there's there's components I think as believers yeah. that sometimes people read this Bible and they had a book coming out like it's a like they're the only one that thought about it right. on fasting right. or on prayer or right. on demon oppression or right. demon possession right. or right. demon demonizing. You know, the right. word better actually we word instead of demon possession be demon demonized. Right. Uh, that's a better Greek word. Anyway, right. Right. Yeah, but, so, but, there, but for us, yeah. all right, the reality of spiritual warfare in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 18 is true. Super real. Every yeah. day it's a battle, all mm -hmm. right? And it could come from things within your own staff. It could come from without things that are happening in the community. Right. It could happen with people inside your buildings. We've been right. so blessed over the years that I only have one or two major incidences mm -hmm. with the thousands and tens of thousands of men and women that we've had in our centers. Because when we're, when we're letting people in. Yeah, they're bringing want, all kinds of stuff yeah, with them. And we don't know where and, they've been either, Chuck. Yeah. I mean, we don't know, are they being truthful for us? We don't know right. if they're running from the law. We yeah. don't know. Uh, you know, we have to do background screenings as we can, but is that yeah. the guy's real right. name if they right. don't have a, a, um, right. a, a picture right. ID or something? Right. Well, how do we get that picture? There's uh, there's a lot of things yeah. that are involved. And I, and I as I grow older and I and I sit back and I look at certain people's lives, I, I was asked, I said, Lord, why does it seem like somebody, it may take them 10 years, but they finally get it right and then their whole life has changed and they start living for you in a practical way. Not a perfect way, but a practical right, way. Right, right. Then others can go 30, 40 years trapped, mm -hmm. you know, by alcohol or by drugs or by gambling or by sex or right, something that's yeah. addictive to them. And right. by the way, people say, well, you know, Jesus said just go and sin no more to the, to the woman at the well, you know, about a prostitution or about yeah, a, right, right. not a prostitution or an illegal um, husband, okay, right, right, right. saying just go and sin no more. In other words, stop doing what you're doing. You know, you're already married. Stop that. Right, right. And people think that's so easy. But when, right, right. But, but when people are really forced with a drug addiction right. or maybe an emotional addiction where you're having a, a domestic violence situation where the woman is, no, she's is wrong to get beat. Right. But she's emotionally addicted to this person or to these right. people. Codependency is an issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah all yeah, that. So, it's so, all they know, and, and again, they're trapped in most yeah, cases. Yeah, they're trapped like that. So, uh, what 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 is yeah. really going on there? Is it how come somebody can come in and yeah, maybe they struggle for four, five, or ten years, but others take twenty, thirty, forty, and they're not. They're back, right back to day one. I've seen, unfortunately, I have seen people that I've known for thirty years. Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart. Yeah that they're still on the street. They haven't found victory yet. Yeah. People that I used to run with, people yeah. that I used to get high with, and you go back and talk to them, oh, you've done well, you've done well. I said, yeah, but God wants you to do well for all of us. Yeah. Not just the select few. There's no Amen. select few. That's right. You know, there's, there's it's us. God's will that all men come to repentance. So as far yeah, as the discipleship saved, yeah. and the evangelism and all that, I think sometimes, especially yeah. when you're in a war, you're in trenches like we are, and even even families in America now are in the trenches many times. Right. Politically, people are turned against each other. 
uh, socially, they're t right. pitted against each other. Right. And if you just know that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and that's, we talk about getting saved with the evangelism, but it's the last I check all through the Bible, it's the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, Lordship is really first and Savior, Lord and Savior. It's never Savior and Lord Jesus, it's Lord and Savior, Lord and Savior. Get spaghetti and meatballs and the peanut butter and chocolate by the way Reese's peanut butter cups what yeah. a combo yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know I guess for for Christendom in general okay I mentioned like worldly metrics and kingdom metrics yeah and you get into some churches and and I'm not knocking any churches but sometimes the central message of Christ is kind of blurred away you mm -hmm. know by by just just to act of having a church service, you know, right, because right. everything has to be perfect, everything has to be timed, everything has to be right. choreographed, everything has to be... That's it's like organized yeah, religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah it's a little but, too organized. And, and it's not wrong. God says that everything be done, done decently in order. Okay, decently in order, yeah. yeah. But yeah. not to the point where we're just copycatters of the world either. Right, right. Where everything that we do is Gotta just... Got to leave room for the Holy Spirit to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we can't, be, so we can't be creative about. enough. Yeah. We have to copy what the world does, yeah. and it's music, and it's form of, of entertainment, you know, right. and those kind of things. And, and again, you know, the, Paul said he became all things to all people so that some can come to know the Lord. See, I don't yeah. know how extent that was. I don't, really, I don't think he went on some kind of crazy limb out there, okay? He right. probably meant he stretched, you know, right. his Judaism. Well, and Jesus his hung his out with sinners yeah. but didn't do what they were doing, right. but he did hang out with them. So, yeah, yeah. and it was, there was so many oral laws that the Pharisees were adding to the books in addition to the 613 Mosaic laws. But so, yeah, when he was around his Pharisaical friends, he didn't want to offend any. So he tried to keep the Pharisaical oral law, which Jesus would well, regularly point out, eh, that, that wasn't for me. That was, that's, that's it's right. like our Congress right now. Like, you know, 250 years later, we got so many laws on top of laws. We're starting to violate the original Constitution. <laughs> which is like the original mosaic so law that Moses gave So throw everything out. out and start over again. <laughs> so, so, so for, for, for believers yeah. everywhere, you right. know, in the church, and it's great to see churches that get it, that come alongside ministries, not just with the homeless, but other right. ministries. It could right. be a, um, pro-life type of ministries, right. or it could be prison ministries, or, or even go across our borders and go to other country ministries yeah, where they come out there, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I tell some, I tell most of my Christian friends that are, that are, that are pastors, you have, you have a mission field right, right out your back door. That's right. It, this, what we do, the, right. the Caring Place, which is our centers in Miami and Broward, every day we're on a mission field. Right. You know, and I, and I think we just had uh, a little while ago we had Memorial Day. And that, that's a special day to remember the fallen of our, right. of our soldiers. Right. And I thought, does Christendom have something like that? Do yeah, we, have, we were we, talking about that on yeah, the do, phone. Do, do we have a martyrdom day or some yeah. martyrdom day where we can sit back and say, look at the millions of people that have given their life for Christ. Yeah. And here we complain in a country because maybe the AC doesn't work. Right. Or, you know, the, yeah. we don't have any bread on the shelf. Oh, my God, yeah. we don't have any bread on the shelf. Our world's it's, it's yeah. imploding. We were talking about that, and Voice of the Martyrs specifically deals with those persecuted countries, and they get the reports firsthand. But they say there's about 60,000 to 70,000 people a year that die because of their faith by somebody from a different faith. But specifically Christians, it's seven to 10,000 Christians for the name of Jesus. So seven thousand a year is about thirty five to forty every day there's a Christian dying because of his name the name and of that's Jesus. What we, that's the ones we know yeah. about probably right, yeah, the other right, ones are yeah. rotting in jail someplace. Exactly. Or, yeah. So or, it's hard or, to track all that. Yeah, but yeah. God so, sees where he sits, yeah. And so there is a there is a, a difference in our ability to share Christ. Right now mm -hmm. we even with things upside down most of the time, mm -hmm. we can still still pretty much uh, share Christ. We don't want to get into certain areas because then we're looked upon as haters right. and right. hate mongers exactly. and all that kind of right. stuff. Right. And, uh, and when people ask me controversial questions, right. my talking point is always, and I mean it too, yeah. is that I don't care what the, if it's political, if it's something else. Yeah, social, pick a position. Yeah, Everybody's yeah, got to vote they, on they, a particular they, position. So I just say, yeah. you know something, no matter what I say, I'm going to offend somebody. So I keep it simple. I focus on a person that may be homeless today. Right. And when I get up in the morning, it's how can myself and others help someone that's maybe picking out of a garbage can today right. or 
who are sleeping in a, an abandoned right. building with two right. children because they have no place right. to go. Right. And that's where I keep it. Now, all the other stuff we can work out, right. uh, but I'm not here to espouse anything right. but Christ. Yeah. And I don't want to get into that political uh, realm. We, right. they, ha, you're going you're gonna to offend somebody. Right. Yeah, there's no perfect people, no perfect pastors, no perfect churches, but one perfect Savior. My pastor used to say, hey, you can argue over the gun laws or abortion, whether it's right or wrong, or same-sex attraction. Um, pick, pick a topic, right? And, uh, but he says, if you preach Christ crucified and people receive Jesus and the Holy Spirit, it's an inside job. There you go, there you go. Then you'll start working on these other topics in the order that's most important. God has a priority list. And right? yet people yeah. want to be controversial. You know <laughs> that? Love, love I, I, I get a chance, you know, I get a, I'm so blessed. Yeah. I get a chance to run with people that have absolutely nothing that are that are on the streets yeah. and then I have ones that are uber rich okay yeah. uh, and uh, in fact I, in my progression because I, I never was exposed to real wealth right. and I remember going to some of these dinners where I didn't know which fork to use right I mean there's so yeah. many forks I learned since then but <laughs> work your way from the outside no, no, in yeah, but yeah, somebody yeah, had yeah, to teach I mean, you right they, yeah. got, they got the cross spoon <laughs> up here and they got the three forks over right. here and yeah. the two knives over here and the spoon over there and right. you go, Wait yeah. a second. Mike Lindell talks about that all the time. You know, I, you don't know how, the, how many. I don't care how many forks you eat with. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, so it was impolite yeah. if you used the wrong fork or you used the same fork twice <laughs> or something. Oh my God! But I, but I'm saying, but right. but but when yeah. it comes down to it, is that um, the Lord He wishes the best for all of us, right. and sometimes our trappings that we have uh, blind our hearts and our minds from the need of a Savior. You know, right. but I've seen and the original point I was making that the church is necessary, that you, the church, when I say church, your local church, whatever, wherever you're yeah, going, okay, right, yeah. what is your local church doing? Yeah, it's, it's, is it doing something for, for, for right, Christ? Right. Is it supporting a missionary? Right. And I talk about Hebrews 10, 24. He says, let us not forsake gathering together as some have, but we gather together to stir up love and good works. There you go. Let's consider one another. You're considering the homeless. Some will consider the pro-life pregnancy center. Some are considering people in another country. But let us consider one another and how to stir up love and good works and exhort one another, encourage one another, more and more as you see the day approaching, which is the judgment day. It's the finish line. As you see the day of Christ is, is second coming. Well, unfortunately, yeah. I think Christianity has got kind of a bad rap <laughs> yeah. over, the, over the last yeah. decades or so is because... Yeah. There's been a message which some really espouse is right. that once you become a believer, mm -hmm. every single wart falls off you. Okay, <laughs> uh, you you become you know saved, satisfied, and sanctified, and on your way to celestial city, <laughs> and uh, you know everything is just going to be great for you in, yeah. in, in turn. Right. And and if it, if it doesn't happen like that, then somehow you didn't have enough. You faith, didn't do it right. Or right, you it's didn't your sow fault. enough seed yeah, or something right. like that. And it really, actually gets harder when you receive Christ. You know, because you know, now you have the spirit on the inside warring against the flesh. We all have this flesh. That's the spiritual. That, it's on like Donkey wrestling. Kong. I always it's say it that it's point. It's wrestling. It's the <laughs> wrestling. And Jesus says, yeah. you know, in the world you shall have tribulation. Yeah, you're gonna have trouble. You're gonna. Yeah. Ha you're not everything's gonna be a cakewalk, and and right. maybe it will be for some. Right. But the normal. What I've seen the normal Christian walk is yeah. two steps up, one step back. Three steps up, two steps back. One yeah. step up, yeah. two steps back. Yeah. But you keep on trying. Amen. That's that's the difference. Amen. You don't give up. You don't throw in the towel. You don't say, I quit on you, Jesus. You never right. quit on me. So right. I know his time is tough. It would be so easy to walk away a from A righteous it. man falls down seven times and gets back up. Right. And that's the a lot of the folks you're dealing with, they quit trying to quit. They've been down so long, they don't even have an ounce of energy to try to get up again. No, it takes true. someone like you to say, hey, come on, let's try one more time. I'll help you. And grab them by the shoulders and yeah. say, if you can't make it, we're here to help you. Right. Let's Training get you levels. up on your feet yeah. and stand. Yeah, amen. That's good. We're going to talk a little bit more about discipleship from some of the staff here at the Miami Rescue Mission so you too can learn how to get involved with the caring place and help make disciples. That is the Great Commission. Keep watching. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. We're hoping by now you've felt a hunch by the Holy Spirit to see your part in getting involved with a ministry like Miami Rescue Mission, the Caring Place, the Broward Outreach Center. There's lots to do. Reverend Ron Brummett, there's a lot of ways that people can come and support you guys. So how can people help what you're doing here? Well, I, I, this is going to sound so trite and so trivial and overdone and everyone says this, but I'm going to say it one more time ad nauseum. Pray. 
That is the number one way that you can support us and support any work of Christ. Yeah. Because it's said in his word over and over and over to pray, 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 pray. What did right. Jesus end up most of his time? Praying. He got up early and went to go pray. Yeah. I mean, uh, he, the disciples couldn't, they didn't, they didn't comprehend his, his, uh, his tenacity in prayer. Yeah. And he's God. <laughs> All right? So to pray, to pray. And even in the Garden of Gethsemane, what did Jesus warn his disciples? You couldn't yeah. stay one hour? And pray, Okay, yeah. so that number one is pray. And I, when I say pray, they, not generic prayers. You know, get, write down what you're going to pray. Get your war room done. Get yeah. your prayer room done. Pray for your, for journals, your loved ones. Yeah, yeah. Get, get, pray for the homeless. Pray for the civil unrest. Pray, I mean, really get pray on your knees. Pray for our president, no matter who's president. Pray. Yeah, yeah, pray. pray for our, our leaders in yeah. the world, okay? Yeah. Pray for our, 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 our co-workers and pray for those that uh, maybe you don't even get along with. You can start praying right. for them, and God will start melting your hearts. So that's right. number one is to pray. Yeah. Now, for our specific ministry, of course, uh, one of the best ways is a good old cash, all right? right? Yeah. It takes a lot of money to run this place. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, we're, 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 at a part, we're at a place right now that uh, we're just so grateful for our donors and supporters. A lot of them have been giving 20, 30 years, as long yeah. as I've been here. Right. Others have given a little longer. Others have come alongside, not just with their money, uh, that, but the next thing you can do is your time. Yeah. And that is, your, can you come out and volunteer? Yeah. Uh, and you say, what can I do? Well, most people want to serve a meal. Right. You know, but we need people to prepare the meal, serve the meal, clean up after the meal. Right. You know, um, wipe down everything, make sure that's done. Um, All the, yeah, the donations yeah. that come in, yeah, yeah. sorting through sort, clothes. Sorting things yeah. like that. Yeah. And so those are volunteers. And, and then, yeah. you know, your time, your talent, and your treasure was talked about your money. Yeah. So those are ways that you can get involved. Now, other ways uh, you can get involved is to do participate in one of our drives. You don't even really come into the campus. But all through the year, we're doing Pamper Drive. Yeah. We have what we call an Undy Sunday Drive, right. which is an underwear Sunday. So yeah. for f certain churches, we'll say, listen, you know, we like to get new underwear. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the underwear we get is clean, mm -hmm. but it's usually from people who've died, or mm -hmm. they call them dead man's underwear. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, you want to get new bras and new panties and new underwear for men. There's just something personal about that. So that's an Undy right. Sunday, or right. you can do it any time. Right. Socks drive. and underwear is a big there deal you go, for homeless. Yeah. And then, then, of course, then we have toy drives. We have yeah. food drives. Right. Uh, you, you, there's a lot of different ways to get involved. Then people that have talents, maybe they can paint. or Maybe right. they can do landscaping. Right. Then we can use your talents there for, for God's glory. We, listen. All the people that are in our programs every single day, there's a lot of wear and tear. There's a yeah. lot of pain that has to always be done. Things right. have to be fixed. Doors right. are broken right. and so on. And then uh, uh, and a, a special way is you can come alongside one of our focus groups. So we have three focus groups. One is called Girlfriends for Girlfriends. Mm -hmm. uh, one is, um, let me get this straight, Cover Girls. Right. And then we have one called Home Run for the Homeless. So there are three different groups. And they have three different purposes. The Girlfriends for Girlfriends, which right. is, uh, and you know something, Chuck, what I found out is that people have niches in their right. life. That's true. Okay? They may not care about feeding someone that just got off the street, but boy, they want to help that woman that just got out of domestic violence mm -hmm. and want to help them and their kids. Yeah. You know, even though they're right. still technically homeless when they right. come to us, right. they have a different background, a different set of problems that are, they're facing. So, right. so if these, these groups called focus groups are right. meant for that. So right. Girlfriends for Girlfriends is one of the first groups we started. And this was for women that come through our centers with their kids and right. families to have safe and affordable housing. So they're raising money. We bought two or three duplexes. We're going to raise some money for next year to continue to do this. Right. So when women and children finish our programs, one of the things they need is safe and affordable housing. So right. that's one way they can get involved, okay? Yeah. Then we have our cover girls. Now, just as the name implies, cover girls are covering the women. Mm -hmm. So they are being mentors. Right. Not so much as they get out of the program. And that's when you get into your apartment and they do right. the appliance drives and all that. They have, this is actually mentoring the women and our children. So, Older women teach younger women. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, well, good. things like, it could be Christianity, but yeah. also things like dress for success. Right. Uh, parenting skills. Your resume together. Yeah, there you go. That's how to how to get a job, how to keep a job, be that shoulder to cry on, you know, right. like a friend that you can right. have that no one has to know about. Right. And uh, and accountability. Yeah. So how am I doing my accountability? And then uh, 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 Home Run for the Homeless are a group of men. Mm -hmm. um, we started this actually with some of the top players in the Marlins. And um, they get together and they help our upper phase men in the program. Right. Similar type of thing, helping them with job seeking skills, how right. to get a job. Uh, doing even interview uh, interviews 
mock interviews, so they right. how to how to act in an interview, what to do right. about their gaps in their in their resume. Right. You know, you've been homeless for two years. What do you put down there? Okay. Right. So those those are our focus groups, and we have more that are coming up. The main thing is is that anyone that's listening to this, uh, anyone that could even uh, listen to it in the future, right. is if you're just sitting down and doing nothing, then you got it all wrong. Right. Okay. God yeah. didn't just get us to be on His team. Right. Right. And sit, sit, you know, sit with him just to sit back on the sidelines. That's he true. wants us out on the field, right? Get in him the dirty, game. get in the game. Get That's why game. we call the show answering the call. God is, at, you ask him for favors. Well, he's asking you to do him a favor. Get involved. He's given us gifts, plural, and talents, plural. To use them, right? That's and that's uh, is it. James says, "He who knows to do good and do doesn't it. do it, sin do that's it. sin. That's the sin of omission. We spend so much time talking about committing sins, committing crimes, commit breaking this law, lying, stealing, but, but not doing good is is just as simple. So yeah. Yeah. If that's you knew somebody in need and you're not doing much about it, then you know, shame on us. Yeah. Right. You, know, you, you can't be everything to everybody, no, but just no, something no, to somebody. No. And if you just ask God, hey, what's my part in this giant parade? <laughs> He's got a spot for you. That's the beauty of it. So I, I encourage, even church leaders, pastors, and so on, yeah. you know, you have people there that want to do things. Right. But you, as a leader, you have to expose them on what to do. And I'm not yeah. saying tell them what to do, but, right. you know, be active and right. say, listen, yeah, you can come to church, and we have our church programs here, and, and you give your tithe here locally. Right. But just look around you. Right. Look at the invisible neighbors around yeah. us that no one really hears or or right. cares about they're they're someone made in the image of God yep. and and though they may look uh, you know dirty and right. unapproachable right. they they're the ones that would Jesus would approach and in, in, while he was living he, he did yeah. the he did the demon possessed and the right. and the people that were outside the city and the right. lepers and all that he right. he was he was on them Amen. you know because they, yeah. they had a greater need inside of them and so Amen. we have the message yeah. salt and light right. uh, in Matthew five sixteen that we, that we can be the salt we can be the light so yeah. why so they can glorify our Amen. God who in heaven 800-817-HOPE, right? Caringplace.org. All right, good stuff. Stay tuned. We're going to have some more folks here from the Caring Place talking about ways you too can get involved and answer the call at the Miami Rescue Mission Broward Outreach Center, a.k.a. the Caring Place. Thank you, brother. Awesome. Thank you, Ron. You are the man. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. Appreciate you. Keep watching. How would you like to partner with Overcomers TV? Become a ministry partner, spreading the good news about your ministry and Jesus Christ. We're selecting ministries for upcoming episodes of Answering the Call. We can also help you produce your own show. Partnering with us is easier than you think. Just visit our website, overcomerstv.live. Be an overcomer today with Overcomers TV.